this real-time edit of a, a lovely young male hooded merganser in the snow. Got to take this right in my backyard. It started snowing that day, walked right outside, and was able to sneak down to the edge of the pond and get this one. All right, so just making it straight. Obviously did not shoot it too straight to begin with. I was all handheld on this one, so I didn't have my ground pod set up because uh, it was kind of such a last-minute effort. All right, so um, looking a little dull. I do want to make the whites a little brighter, so I'm going to hit the lights on that tone curve, and then I'm going to brighten the bird up by lifting the shadows. There we go. Bring those blacks back down for contrast. I want to go... I want to do two things with this. I'm going to go a little cooler with the background overall. I want to give it like that cool kind of like colder winter vibe. Uh, but to me, that makes the duck too blue. So I don't like that. So I'm going to open this version up. I think everything else is looking good. Let me kick those shadows just a little bit more. Blacks. Let me just dial these blacks right in. There we go. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with the composition, the way I shot it. Uh, I did go with a nice slow shutter speed of 40th of a second to let that snow really blur, kind of show some movement in it. I have some with uh, sharp snowflakes first, so then I started playing around with a nice low shutter speed, and uh, it's amazing what the stabilization on the lens and that in-camera stabilization on that Nikon Z6 will do, man. 40th of a second. You know, I was... I say handheld, but I was still, I was just resting the camera on the ground on my hand, but you know, not like the most stable platform, but 40th of a second. And uh, yeah, if I let this kind of render out here, you can see uh, plenty sharp. I mean, maybe not razor sharp on the head there, but that uh, close enough for this image. It's a little bit smaller in the frame. So anyway, uh, let me open this version up in Photoshop with the kind of cooler uh, white balance and the the nice more blue tones that I think work well for the majority of the photo and then I'll come back and make an, a little bit warmer version and get the duck looking just the way I want it there we go I think that's kind of the tone that I want because I'm looking to introduce some good color contrast in the photo between the bird and the background so I think that should do it let me hop back to Photoshop there we go. And then we'll stack these things up. Get rid of that version. Let's mask that bird out. And we'll paint just the bird back in now. So we'll start down here and do just the bird. There we go. Love all the snow just chilling on its back, on the head. It was really cool. This was like the end of the session with it. And by session, I mean about a three minute encounter. But it did come in when it first showed up with another, I think there was actually, uh, there was a female along with this young male and they swam right in front of me, like frame filling shots. It was really, really cool. I had an absolute blast seeing them that close and I got just some real nice, like intimate portraits with this duck uh, really close and you know, all the snow on its back and everything like that. So that was, that was a lot of fun to see. I'm going to leave the bill cooler just because it doesn't make sense for, it's kind of shiny and reflecting the existing colors and what surround it. So I think leaving that a little bit cooler will make sense. And I got to say, I'm probably too far on this warmth, um, you know, but I want to get it all painted in here first and then I'll just kind of back off the effect if need be anywhere specifically or just overall and that should do it yeah yeah I mean not bad I'm just gonna save this selection real quick oops there we go just in case I want to use it again because I do I think it's too brown in just some areas here too kind of uh, warm so I'm just gonna back off of it where it's just getting a little too brown maybe just on the back of the head there a little there I think that's gonna yeah, see that does the trick. There was the that's the original white balance, cool white balance overall, and then that one just kind of warms the bird up, gives it a little bit more life. I like that a lot. All right, so uh, I am gonna just clone out just like a dark kind of smudgy spot right down here on the bottom right. I don't know what that's all about. That's just the reflection of that tree trunk right there. So that's looking good. All right, next up, let's start doing some contrast on the bird itself. Kind of want to add some contrast right in there I'll load that selection back up which will be nice and helpful make sure it keeps me in the lines there 
There we go, a little added contrast there. Really wanna make this yellow eye pop. That's a real good indicator that it's a male, a young male with the yellow eye kind of transitioning into the adult's yellow eye and the all black bill. Females almost always have some orange on them. So anyway, I went too far with it and now I'm just kind of painting back off of that a little bit. And then you can see some areas actually got a little bit warmer back there in the background. I kind of want to even that tone out or maybe even go a little more. Look at that. Let's go real cyan with it. Oh yeah, I'm digging that. All right, well, let me do it just in the more brown areas to kind of even the tone out first. Then I'll globally kind of take that whole background a little bit cooler. I'll make the water reflection a little bit cooler here. So I'm just tweaking the color now, just trying to dial that in. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good on the background there. I kind of evened it out. Yeah, it takes some of that warmth out of the, some of those areas. All right, and then I'll do another curves adjustment layer and just really kind of cyan this whole thing. Just make it look so, you know, cold out. Just that's the goal, right? I don't know. For me, I think a lot of us, we all kind of associate, that's too much blue on the bill, um, you know, cold with like blue and ice and that sort of thing. So I think it works well to kind of just kind of shift that white balance more towards the blue side to kind of set the mood of this particular photo and make it feel more icy and cold. Boy, I got to say, I think that's about going to do it. Um, there's one just real bright area in the middle. I think I want to just kind of tone that down a little bit. I know there was just more snow on the ground back there, which is fine, but um, it's just kind of drawing my attention and even that area right there. Uh, I just kind of want to even out some of those bright areas and that's looking pretty good. There's some, it's a little bit magenta in some of those areas. I'm seeing some hints of red. So I'm going to throw some cyan adjustment in and just kind of hit a few spots with that to kind of hopefully get rid of that. I'd rather it be more kind of like a, yeah, no other way to put it, more of a cyan um, blue back there than like a, a more of a magenta blue. All right, I think that'll do it. So before, after, all right, now the total before and after I went to blue. So I'm going to go in and back off of this one layer. Let's just go maybe 50% opacity there. Yeah, I think that's good. And then the other layer before that, I'll drop to 70. And now let's see. That's better. That's more subtle. And that's a good thing to do all the time when you're making some, you know, somewhat more major color shifts and stuff like that. Definitely click a before and after on it uh, because sometimes you can see, like, as I was doing it, it didn't seem like too much at all because each adjustment was just kind of stacking up. But once it was done, it was like, oh, geez, that was... I made it like way too blue in the background and uh, yeah, here we go. Like that's more what I'd be looking for in a difference between the two. So let me just let my computer catch up here. It's always kind of going a little bit slower when I'm recording these videos. And hopefully I can show you these side by side. There we go. But look at that, right? It's just, you know, kind of blah gray. Whereas here, those colors just to me anyway, really set a mood. Um, you know, it's funny, like, and look how much more brown the duck is to begin with. So that being the case, I think I can actually get away with the duck being a little bit warmer up front, uh, in the final image there. So let me, let me actually open that back up in Photoshop one more time and go a little bit warmer. Uh, so again, a, a really good reason. Oops. I'm on the wrong image there. Needed to do this one. Um, a really good reason to let me close that ex kind of compare uh, your before and after on some images because you can kind of see like hey I went too far I didn't go far enough kind of thing and yeah you know when we look at these side by side let me bring that up again just so I can really kind of get a good comparison yeah there's I mean there's a little bit more brown in that duck than there is here eh, maybe not I think that's pretty good, actually. Yeah, let's stick with that. Let's stick with that. Oh, that's what I had done. I think I had mistakenly compared it to just the edited raw file that was looking too brown. So uh, I see that now. All right. So 
Uh, that is going to be our final before and after. Look at that. I'm getting myself all confused looking at the wrong things. Yeah, this looks really good. That brown tone pretty much matches the amount of brown in the original exposure there. And then we just went more cool and blue with the white balance to set a nice mood. Really kind of make that duck stand out. The eye, that bright yellow eye really stands out now. Add a little contrast there. I'm really happy with how that looks. All right. Thanks so much. Sorry for the little bit of confusion at the end there. Uh, I'm, I, every once in a while I get mixed up too. All right, so if you are interested in learning a little bit more about how I do everything that I do here in post-processing, the best place to go is rayhennessy.com. Go to the workshops menu, right on down to online workshops, and then you can check out all the online options I have. Remote sessions, you can work directly with me, sharing screens, I'll walk you through how to edit stuff, answer any questions you have. The online Lightroom course is great, it teaches you everything I know and how I use Lightroom to both organize and edit all of my photos using Lightroom. The online bird photography course teaches you a lot more about how I shoot in the field and covers all kinds of stuff, including gear and a little bit of, um, you know, technique and lighting and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, and then lastly, I have mentorships where you can work with me in an ongoing basis, get some really good feedback to kind of grow your photography and it's all personalized just to you. So those are all the options. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you on the next one.